it's Lee here from Click Studios bringing you another training video and today we'll be walking through the process of configuring backups in Password State. This is a new video for backups in Password State 9 as the requirements have changed slightly from previous builds. We now use PowerShell instead of .NET Framework code and we've added in some extra functionality all of which will be explained later in this video. Having backups of Password State is critical in the event of a disaster or a failed upgrade or possibly you may need to retrieve data that has been accidentally deleted from the system. If you go to the effort of configuring backups in password state, this also allows you to then perform automatic upgrades, which makes any future update to password state very quick and easy. Password state consists of two components. There is a front end website which is installed on the Windows file system, and the data is stored within a SQL database. It's critical to have a copy of both of these in the event of a disaster. Our backup process can back up both of these components if configured correctly, but if you have other processes for your Windows Server and SQL database to, to do backups, you're more than welcome to use those other tools instead of having our software back them up for you. Today we'll be backing up everything to a local Windows share on our password state server, and the SQL database resides on a separate server. Your infrastructure may be slightly different to this, and for this reason, we'd strongly recommend looking through our documentation, which can be found on the Click Studios website under the support section. First, we'll create an account in Active Directory that has no special permissions on the domain. I'll call this account Videos Backup, and I'll set a simple password just for the purpose of this video. Once this is created, we need to add this account into password state, just like you would a normal password record, but it must be stored within a password list that is enabled for resets. If you've never seen this feature in password state before, I'll show you how to do this now. First, we'll create a new password list, and on the first page of this three-step wizard, we'll choose the enabled for resets template. We also need to give it a title, which can be anything you like, and for this video, I'll just call this password list password state accounts. Now we need to run through the wizard and when we're finished this new list will appear in your navigation tree. We'll add in the domain account into this password list and when we add this in we'll deselect the option to automatically reset the password. For the more advanced user, you may want to leave this option enabled, but you must ensure that you know what the password for this account is if you have password protected your backups. Password protection of backups is a new feature in Password State 9 that I was talking about earlier. By leaving this option deselected, Password State will never try to automatically reset the password for this account. Next we'll choose an account type to be Active Directory, and we'll set the domain the username and the password. Next we'll flick over to the password resets tab and select a privileged account. And once this is done we'll go back into the general tab and we'll click the heartbeat icon. This will run a quick test to confirm that the password that you've stored in this field matches the current password for that account in Active Directory. Now we click save to store this account. We need to give this account enough permissions to perform the automatic upgrades and we can easily do this by adding the account into the local administrators group of your server. This allows the account to start and stop any services on your web server that we deem necessary during the upgrade process. Once this account has been granted local admin permissions, we also have to give it modify rights to the password state install folder, which is by default C drive inetpub password state. We need to do this due to the way that the password state website in IIS interacts with the file system.
The next step in this setup process is to create a network share that the backups will be stored in. There are a few different options for this and for more detailed information, please refer to our backup documentation in the share permission section. In today's video, I'll be creating a Windows share on my password state web server, but you can create it anywhere you like. When we create this share, we need to give the backup account change permissions to the share itself. If you are intending on also backing up your SQL database to this same share, you must also give the SQL Server computer object change permissions to this share also. We do this by selecting the computer object type, ensuring that you have your domain selected, and then simply search for and set the SQL database to name. In this example, my SQL Server is called Test Server 01. Now to finish off setting up this network share, and again, due to the way that the password state website interacts with the file system, you should also give the backup account modify permissions to the share folder. Now we need to start working on setting up permissions so the SQL database can be backed up. If you don't intend to allow password state to back up your SQL database, you can skip the next few steps until we get to the part of the video where we configure the backup screen. Okay, so first we'll open SQL Management Studio Tools and connect to your database server. We'll now add in the backup account under the security folder. And we need to grant this user backup permissions for the password state database. We do this by going to user mapping, selecting the password state database, and then checking the option called DB backup operator. To finish this process, click on the OK button. Now we need to log into the server where we've got SQL installed. And I've just performed some video magic and you should notice now that I'm logged into test server 01. There are two commands we need to run in an elevated PowerShell prompt and I already have these preloaded into my PowerShell ISE session. These PowerShell commands can be found in our backup documentation, specifically under the section 4 where there are options for SQL database requirements. The first command I'll be running will download and install a Microsoft SQL module, which will allow us to run some special backup commands that aren't natively found in PowerShell. The second command will enable PowerShell remoting and what this does is allows your web server to create a PowerShell session to your database server so it can run these SQL backup commands. The last thing we need to do is grant your backup account permissions to do PowerShell remoting on your database server. We do this by simply adding in that user to the remote management users security group on your database server. Okay, so configuration of the servers and shares is complete. I'll flick back now to my password state web server where we are logged into password state. We now need to set up the backup screen in password state with the relevant information. First, we'll search for and set the domain account we set in the password record previously. If you search on the username, you should see a list of matches on this screen and you simply need to select the appropriate account. Next, we will set the backup path to be the same for the web install files and the database. If you wanted to create a second share and apply the same permissions to it, you can split out the backup locations to two separate shares. And this is one of the new features in Password State 9. So you can have your Password State web install files on one server and you can have the database backups on another server. The next few options are fairly self-explanatory, but you can choose whether or not to perform a backup immediately before you attempt an upgrade. If you have other backup plans for your SQL database, you should deselect this option and password state will not duplicate your backups for SQL. If your database resides on a separate server to where you have password state installed, you should leave this option selected. Otherwise, deselect this option if your website and database are both hosted on the same server. You can also back up your split secrets, which are critical in the event of a disaster. 
The split secrets are also found in your web.config file and your database. But if you want a complete set of these all within the one zip file, you should enable this option. Another new feature in Password State 9 is the option to password protect your backup zip files. If you choose this option, the zip files will be password protected with the current password set for your backup account. It's critical you always know this password if you want access to these zip files. Setting this option ensures that your data cannot be accessed if a malicious user was able to steal these zip files from your network share. And lastly, if you want to change the names of your zip files when they're created on disk, you can do so in this section. Our backup process appends the current date and time to these files, so they're always unique. Once we've configured all of this, we'll save these settings and you are ready to do automatic backups and upgrades. If you want to test these settings are all configured correctly, click on this test button and if there's something wrong with your setup, an error will show you up on this page. If you find you cannot resolve any errors, please look on the instructions tab and this links you to our backup documentation which should have everything you need to know in it in order to set things up correctly. If you still have any issues at all, you're welcome to contact Click Studio support for more assistance. That concludes this training video today. We hope this helps you set up your backups in Password State 9. As always, if you need any help, please contact us on support at clickstudios.com.au. Thank you.